from the Philippines and I'm in Loki from Yamma and we are from the Paris Fathers today we are going to talk about two things that are very close to our hearts the first one is our founder St. Joseph Calasans and the second we will tell you more about the Paris Fathers or our order uh, since I was a kid brother I really wanted to become a priest because when I've heard St. Joseph Calasans I want to emulate his life I want to follow in his footsteps. I really want to be an educator since I was a young boy. What about you, brother? For me, when I was a young boy, I'm also interested to be a priest. And I really want to be a priest. And when I found this father, I tried to join with the other other PRS. That's why now I'm in the seminary of the PRS fathers and I'm a novice. I know that you heard about many times about the St. Joseph Calasans, the life of St. Joseph Calasans. So now I will present to you, I will talk about the life of St. Joseph Calasans in briefly. Once again, good morning, kids. Now I'm going to tell you about the life of St. Joseph Calasans. As you know about the St. Joseph Calasans, he was born in Pirata de Lassa, a small town near the Pyrenees mountains in the northern part of Spain. He was born on September 11, 1557. His parents were Peter of Pedro and Maria. He was the youngest in the family. He has five sisters and three, two brothers. When he was young, he described, he is described as an obedient, docile, and affectionate child, like you. And you know, when he was five years old, he is very enthusiastic to find again the demons because he thought because of the demons, many souls go to the hell. That's why he wants to kill the demon. He wants to kill the. He wants to fight against the demon. And one day, he took a small sword from his father's let's make sure and met his friends and called them to follow him to fight against the demon or the olive tree and you know as you see in the picture after fighting the demons the branches that he is holding 
was broken and he fell down under the tree. And one day, he was to become a priest also. And he asked his father, but his father did not allow him to enter the seminary to become a priest because his father wants him to possess, to inherit his possessions because he has no more brothers. After his two brothers died, he will inherit his father's possession. And one day, he got sick and he promised to the Mama Mary to become a priest if he get well, if he get better soon. And when he recovered from the sickness, he asked his father again to become a priest. And his father allowed him. Why? Because his father said, better a priest son than a dead son. So his father allowed him to enter the seminary. You see, he is carrying his back to go to seminary. He's very happy because he wants to be a priest. And his father also happy because his son is recovered from the sickness already. And he studied many years about many things. And he was ordained as a priest in Sanahuja, Spain. He became master of ceremonies in C.U.D. Ujjel, Kedidren, and Vigar Itram City. He was also he was also parish priest in the towns of Calvaro and Otonodi. Autonomida. He was young and energetic priest, robust and very strong. One day, when he go through the mountains, he found a man drawing his donkey, as you see in the picture. And that donkey was full in a muddy pond. And the man cannot do it alone to draw out the, the docking in the Mandi. And when St. Joseph Kalasas saw this, he wanted to help him. And then he get branches of the leaves and then bring it to the donkey to let it eat and to break it out. And as I have mentioned about before, he is very strong. And he was carried out the doggy from the mandy place. In 1592, he went to Rome and enjoyed art confraternities to alleviate the sufferings of the poor. And when he was in Rome, one day he got around the city and he found many children are on the road playing, wasting their time on the road because they are very poor. Their families, their parents cannot support them to go to the school and to study. So they just wasted their time on the road. And when St. Joseph Kalasan saw this, he feels sad because he had mercy on the children. And he think about what to do about for the children? How can he help the children? And he said, maybe the Lord wants me to take care of the poor children. And he decided to take care of the children, to educate the children in Rome. In Santa Dorothea Church, St. Joseph started Jushi free school for poor children. See, in the picture, he is teaching the children. So the children are very interested listening to him, what he is teaching. And as the number of the students increased, he moved to San Petalio and lived there 
and work there for the rest of his life because he wants to help the children, he wants to teach the children, he wants to educate the children, and he did not come back to his place, the Lhasa. So he stayed in Rome and teach the children there until the end of his life. As you know, he is not only a priest, but he is also a founder of the religious Biaris. He established the Biaris Fathers, whose mission is to evangelize through education of children and youth. In his order, he educates not only the children, but also the youth. Those who are uneducated, he tries to help them, to teach them how to live, how to act, how to speak, how to obey their parents, how to obey their elders ones. And of course, as the children are many, he cannot do alone. That's why he needs companions. And he called also his companions to help him. And as the number of Pierres increased, they took care of many ch poor children and at different cities at homes. Because his, there are many also his companions to help him. So he separated his companions to another community or another school to help the poor children, to teach the children. But as you know, when you are um, famous and when you live in the community, you are loved by many peoples. Many people will praise you. Ah, oh, this one is good, this one is good. They will praise you. So, no, see, St. Joseph Palasa is a very good man. He is a kind man. He is very intelligent. So many people love him. Children and you love him also. Not only children and youth. But also the people who near, who live near him, love him and praise him also. But as you know, when we are famous, there are some people who doesn't, who do not like you, because they want to be famous like you also. They want to be loved also. They want to be cared by people also. But of course, as you know, they are not good, and they are not loved anymore. They are not love the people anymore. That's why they are jealous to others. In the case of St. Joseph Calabsans also, since St. Joseph Calabsa is very famous, very kind, very good, there's also a priest whose name is Mario Sosi, betraying Calabsans because he is jealous of St. Joseph Calabsans. He wants to be the place of St. Joseph Calabsans, but he cannot because he is not a good man. <coughs> St. Joseph Calasans and his assistants went take care of prisons to Vatican on August 8, 1642. Upon learning that the accusation was a lie, they were all released. Why the accusation is a lie? Because Father Mario Sosi tried to make his own story to accuse St. Joseph Calasans. But when the priest and Pope saw that St. Joseph Calasans is innocent, he was relieved. St. Joseph Calasans was relieved. And as you know, St. Joseph Calasans was seriously sick. As you see in the picture, see how good is he? He is very good, that's why many children are surrounding him. Look at him, take care of him. They want to see him because he is very sick. He is going to die. That's why you see one of the sisters in the picture is crying for him because he wants, she wants St. Joseph Classes to continue with children, to teach with children. And you know, some children are very happy. Why? Because they know that St. Joseph Kalasa is a saint. He, they saw that the face of St. Joseph Kalasa is very pure, a very innocent face. That's why they are very happy. Because their teacher, their master is a saint. And St. Joseph Kalasa died on August 25, 
1648. Consequently, the people started going to church and many miracles happened since then. Why miracles happened? Because he a saint. He cured the sickness of the sick people. He made many miracles. He showed himself that he is a saint. And he was declared blessed in 1748. And, and then he was canonized as a saint in 1767. This is all the life of St. Joseph Colossal. I share about you about the briefly of St. Joseph Colossal. So kids, I hope you will get something, you will learn something from St. Joseph Colossal. To try to become like St. Joseph Colossal. To be holy, to be obedient, and to be docile and affectionate children also. That's why let us try let, let us try our best to become a better person as St. Joseph Colossa did. And continuously the other part will be presented by our brother Geoffrey. He will discuss or he will share you about the orders of the dearest fathers. So let us listen to him. Thank you brother Loki for that wonderful story of St. Joseph Calasans. Now, as what Brother Loki has mentioned, I will talk more about our order, the Piarist Fathers, or simply called as the Piarists. So, the full name of the Piarist Order is the Order of Clerics Regular of the Poor Mother of God of the Pious Schools. That's pretty lengthy, if you ask me. So, we just abbreviate it and we just shorten it. Normally, we are called in Europe as just Piarist Fathers. It came from the words Scolarum Piarum, or the Pious Schools. So the Piarist Fathers are a clerical religious order. It was founded by St. Joseph Calasans in the 17th century, and we are a community of father and brothers dedicated to Christ, following our motto, Piety and Learning. So all of us here in the Paris community, we want to dedicate our lives, we want to teach children, we want to evangelize children, and we are trying to follow the footsteps of St. Joseph Calasans. So we are called the Father or the Brothers of the Pious Schools. Our mission, as I've mentioned, is to educate young children and the youth in schools, and we teach them piety. So we dedicate our lives in education and most of us are working in schools and universities. So what do we do? What does a Paris father or a Paris brother do? As I have mentioned, we dedicate our lives in educating the children and youth, especially the poor, and we have been leaders in education for over four centuries. And still today, our concerns and hopes and aspirations of them. So we try to grow as the world grows. We try to see what is lacking in the world. And we try to fill that through education, of course. Uh, the calling of every Paris father or every Paris brother. <clears throat> as what Brother Loki mentioned earlier, Kalasan showed his love for life, his love for children, in his love for education. He showed his love for studies, for priesthood, especially the poor, for education, the religious life, and love of church and of Jesus Christ. So where exactly are the Piarists in the world right now? We are present in five continents. We have presence in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, in North and South America. So here are some of the countries where there is Paris presence. In Africa, we have Paris in Cameroon, in Senegal, in Ivory Coast, in Gabon, in Equatorial Guinea, in Congo, and in Madagascar. In Asia, of course, we have Paris presence in the Philippines, where we are at right now. We have Paris in Japan, in India, in Vietnam, in Indonesia, even in China, 
in East Timor and where Brother Loki is from, from Myanmar. In Europe, we have presence in Spain, where St. Joseph Calasanz is from, in Czech Republic, in Hungary, in Poland, in France, in Austria, in Slovakia, in Italy, in Romania, in Belarus. In South America, we have presence in Argentina, in Bolivia, in Brazil, in Chile, in Colombia, in Ecuador. And in North America, we have presence in the USA, Mexico, the Dominican Republic, Cuba, Venezuela, Puerto Rico, Canada, Nicaragua, and Costa Rica. So as a Paris father or as a Paris brother, you should always be ready for missions because some of us are being sent to different countries in the world. So if I am from the Philippines, there are chances that I will also be sent to Africa, to Europe, South America, and North America. All for the love of children and all for the love of educating the youth. Doesn't that sound exciting? We, the Paris, have discovered Jesus in the faces of children and we answer our Lord's call to serve them by offering an education for life, by being in the classroom, inspiring young people and guiding them to experience life. So as we have mentioned, we see Christ in you. We see Christ in every student that we teach and we try to educate them or we try to relate to them just like how we relate to Jesus Christ himself. Kalasan's work and thought led to the subsequent influence of many other congregations similar to his own. Worthy to mention of Kalasan's influence to other great educators such as St. Jean Baptiste de La Salle in the 18th century and St. John Bosco in the 19th century. But we must remember that St. Joseph Calasanz was the first saint who established tuition-free education in Rome, and he was the pioneer of tuition-free education. And those without the spirit to teach the poor do not have the vocation to enter our institute. So one of the requirements of entering the Paris or joining the Paris Fathers is this desire this burning desire to teach young children and be an educator one day. And that's the reason why me and Brother Loki are here in uh, the order St. Joseph Kalasan has established. Well, in order to sum up everything that we have discussed about the order, we have here a couple of videos from our brothers and fathers talking more about the Piarist Fathers and the order. So let's get to watch them. Did you know that in Europe, it was a Catholic priest who founded the first free popular public school for poor children? Yes, it was Father Joseph Calazans. He opened the doors of Pius School in Trastevere, Rome, to poor children in 1597. It was a time when education was almost unavailable to the poor. So Father Joseph dedicated his life to the service of poor children, especially in the field of education. He believed that education would provide them a better life. And today, the religious order he founded in 1617, the Order of Poor Clerics Regular of the Mother of God of the Pious Schools, or simply the Piarists, continues to realize his dream. This is at the core of the religious identity of the Piarists. In fact, they were the first religious order of priests to take evangelizing and educating children as their primary ministry. On top of professing the three religious vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, they also vowed to dedicate their lives to the education of the young. Each peerist responds to the same call 
that their founder heard upon seeing the misery of poor children in Rome. Father Joseph Calasanz was canonized a saint in 1767, while in 1948 he was named Heavenly Patron of all Christian public schools in the world. In 1997, on the fourth centenary of the first pious school, Pope St. John Paul II said of St. John Calasanz, Friends, classes have resumed in most parts of the world. May teachers find inspiration in St. Joseph Calasanz. Let us teach with much compassion, especially in these trying times. St. Joseph Calasanz, pray for us. Okay, kids, now we have activity. We will color the picture of St. Joseph Calasanz. I will give you the picture and you will follow the picture that you see in the screen, you will color the picture and look at the picture carefully and color the picture that there is no color yet, one. And I will give you 10 minutes to color the picture. Okay, get your crayons and let us do it now. Go, let's go. Yes, okay, so <clears throat> second part, second part of the activity. Second, okay, so I hope that you are all okay. All right, so one, two, three, go.
Okay, so we hope that you were able to color the picture just like how it is on the screen. As you can see on your picture, there are a few lines under the picture of St. Joseph Calasans. What we would like to you to do is to tell us what you think is your message for St. Joseph Calasans. If you have a message for St. Joseph Calasans, if you have a prayer, please write it on the lines provided below. Alright, so we will give you another five minutes to write your prayer or your message to St. Joseph Calasans. And after this, you will submit them to your teachers, and your teachers will tell us what your message to, to St. Joseph Calasans, or if you have a message for us, you can also write that down there. Alright, so your five minutes starts now.
City of Gases, his kingdom.